We're all looking at the same thing. Thank you for joining us for another perspective from the Sag Nasty If Anybody Asked Me podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment. For more videos, please subscribe to the channel. I guess I would say predominantly white school mm -hmm. down there, but it was a little bit more diverse. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a much larger city, though, in, you know, larger neighborhoods and schools. Saginaw mm -hmm. is like... And so he he knew who a lot of people were because of sports. And I knew, no, I did not hang around with or, you know, you know, just I wasn't involved in circles of people, but I knew a lot of people and a lot of people knew who I was. And a lot of it had to do with my church going. OK. And I think and, your personality, though, because you're approachable. Yeah, right. Exactly. Very approachable. <laughs> I think that every you're, you're memorable in that way too. It's like, oh, I feel Aww. comfortable around her too. So you're Thank able to you. float that way though. Yeah. But that sounds lonely at the same time. No? Is there a point? Okay. Yeah. Tell me about that. It's definitely, it was different, you know, especially in retrospect. I, it's, it's really hilarious because for how many people I know, how many people I am, connected to in some way no I didn't have sleepovers with my besties and you know things like that I didn't have those types of connections but I have connections that um support and helped me um like even in going off to college and exactly. you know um singing throughout high school there in Saginaw um but yeah to not have the close um girlfriends to hang out with and to bounce things off of on a constant basis um I mean I managed evidently I did something okay you know and, yeah. and, and between just knowing right from wrong but by the way I was raised and um just just trying to trying to do good I guess um maybe it should I be still, a private conversation but for me, you believe it or not, I feel the same way as you. And mm. I felt that Tria felt the same way too. And I feel like that somehow, I don't know how, and I don't want to make it a political thing, but I do think it's about being black in Saginaw. Mm. I just uh, interviewed, had a conversation with Lake Dell. Do you know Lake Dell by chance? Because he's from our neighborhood. He's older. Yeah. Though. Okay. Yeah, he so, went to high, high school with us and he was yeah, like maybe the, three freshman, years yeah. older than us. Yeah, two exactly. Or three. Yeah, yeah. So he's like my big brother. He's my OG. And he was explaining how being black in the township is such a unique experience compared to like yes. being black in the city. Right. Yes. And so when you talk about having girlfriends and stuff like that, especially if you didn't grow up in the elementary program where you had a chance to like really know people. It seems a little difficult to go beyond the next line of defense. Of course, you, like you said, you're friends with everyone, and uh, maybe people would be offended even to hear that you like were lonely or something like that. Oh, she could hang out with me, but it's not as simple as that at all, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, invite me somewhere or like understand <laughs> right. the dynamics that I come from and stuff like that. So for me, like I was voted class butterfly, as you know, homecoming king. But yeah. if it wasn't for my two best friends, Stu and Steve, who, you know, I knew all the way back from day one. And the reason, like, we all kind of just lived in Steve's house. He was like our, our din father um, and mm -hmm. the din mother in Steve's house. So, like, we grew up that way where we didn't have kind of the dynamics of race or anything like that. Um, um, I'm not saying it's like racism, but there's something... Right that separates a little bit it makes it a little bit harder to connect um to people sometimes especially if you come into the system very late as you did do you feel that i i, I can i can see that because the the point that you made um that really makes it make more sense for me is that it is unique as a black person to live and grow up in the township mm-hmm I, I coming from Oklahoma in Oklahoma one of the similarities is that I went to a um I guess I would say predominantly white school mm -hmm. down there but it was a little bit more diverse mm -hmm. um I was in a much larger city though in you know largest neighborhoods and schools Saginaw mm -hmm. is like Deep, you know that's what you really realize when you get older up. it's small 
It is. <laughs> it's no joke. It's small. Literally on the map, Saginaw was not on the map when my wow. English teacher tried to find it at, in Oklahoma when I tried to tell him where we were moving to. Wow. So, but, I mean, we know Saginaw is on the map. Saginaw is no. great, has produced, right, has produced great people. It's a crazy um, place. You, you leak in that way, too. Exactly. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. yes, so I totally agree with that. Um, I think, too, culture and family background definitely played a large part in that like my people my folks and some things about my upbringing I'm just starting to understand or even know like coming to the knowledge of um while my people are very much so hospitable they when somebody does say they want to drop by or if there's a, a need to have some people or a gathering of some sort they, my folks are all about it. My parents, they are, they can't wait to just gather, especially my dad. My dad mm. is a gatherer. He's mm -hmm. a, let's, let's hang out. Let's eat mm. some good food, yeah. nibble on something <laughs> and, you know, and, and laugh and joke yeah. and talk. Um, They're not the type though, to have house guests all the time. They're not the type to have parties. Sleepovers. Um, <laughs> a lot of sleepover if if i had that one close friend from church <laughs> which in oklahoma i actually did and yeah. she and i we slept over each other's house like all the time mm -hmm. um it wasn't always convenient because we lived on um, far ends of the city she mm. actually lived in another city she lived in edmond oklahoma mm. um but we belonged to the same church but anyways um we we didn't do that growing up in my home, you know, outside of, okay, if it's somebody we really know and we know their folks and, you know, every so often we want to do something. All right. What is but that outside though? of that. Because Taria had the same thing. And that's why I talk about, like, I don't see you guys that much in the neighborhood. And I knew there was mm -hmm. a reason for that. But as a man, a young boy, and within the dynamics I had, because I grew up in a divorce home. I had so mm -hmm. much freedom that you just couldn't even understand. But I understood that, oh, there's something going on here. Why they can't go out as females, as black females mm -hmm. coming from a black household. Because I could never have sleepovers ever either. And my friends are like, <laughs> why can't we come in? Like, no, you wait outside. And I didn't even understand really why. But I feel like my mom would look <laughs> at me sideways with just suddenly two kids just walked into the front door unannounced. Mm -hmm. You would need like a day advance to let someone really come in like <laughs> <laughs> right that's how it felt at least and like if it never was explained like don't have no one come in the house but i always just kind of understood for some reason i don't know why we're gonna move just a little bit I'm gonna yeah, no problem. yeah no problem um yeah that is definitely um the vibe we had growing up um uh, i think that it is a hang on a second yep no problem I think that it's a security thing. In all honesty, I think I honestly I think the best way to put it is security. Mm. That's like what do, what are we to... what are we afraid of? What are, what's so what's what's to be afraid of? Them folks all up in our house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Them folks all up in our house. Nah, um I think that when you don't know other people and how they operate so let's say for example my parents they don't know your parents so if something were to happen they don't they don't have a, an, a relationship with your parents to understand that excuse me that we function um respond to things in the same way and so who knows what could happen when little Johnny is hanging out at the house. I know he, you know, me, me as the parent, let's say my parents, I should say, know they're, they're going to treat him just like he's their own while they're in their home. But also if little Johnny decides to do something crazy and destroy something on my property, destroy something in my house or hurt himself doing those types of things or even by accident, 
how is that going to affect or how will his parents respond rather? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. ain't nobody got time to deal with that when you're trying to raise your own. Yeah. Go to work. Make a living. Don't nobody have time for that. That's how I felt basically you just articulated the, the feeling that was given.